religion. Thank you, Lisa. Thank, thank you, you for having, having me. No, thank you for coming. <laughs> it's it's my for... honor. I'm very happy to be here. No, thank I you. I appreciate it. So how did this gift start for you? How did you realize you could speak to spirit? I believe I was born this way. My earliest memories, um, about three or four years old, I would say. I remember standing at my maternal grandmother's car um, out in Oregon. Um, and I remember thinking to myself, there's something very different and very strange about you. <laughs> and I was about three or, I would say about three or four years old. Um, I did, I remember standing there and thinking that about myself. Um, and I would, I, all these things about my grandfather, my maternal grandfather, I would know things. And these were things about people in my family that you would never tell a child, like kind of dark secrets right. um, about people. And I would just, it was that way growing up, but that's the farthest back, so I assume I was born that way. I've always known things that were going to happen, um, known things about people that would nobody would ever tell another person, especially a child. Say, how do you know things? Are, are you, is spirit are you telling um, you? Are you seeing something? I, I hear, and I'm clair, clair, um, clairvoyant, clairaudient, clairsentient, so I hear spirit. I hear spirit just like I hear you, but I hear him in my mind. 99% of the time. Sometimes with my human errors, but that takes him a lot of energy. So most of the time it's in my mind. Uh, my mind is never quiet. Spirit's always talking to me. So they use words, um, speak full sentences. Sometimes it's one or two words. Sometimes it's conversations that go on all day. Um, and so when I was younger, I would hear that, but I didn't understand what it was. I thought I was talking to myself. Um, and as I grew, I, I came to understand that it was spirit and all of that. Um, but I well, just, it's just a knowingness, um, cause I'm an empath, a highly sensitive person. Now empath also means that you can read energy and you can read energy and you just energy. know things. And now, there's when really you say no, you just know things. What like you can tell me who, like I'm going to marry. You can tell me what's going to happen. Like it's just things that come to you. Everybody kind of has it to some degree. Mine yeah. is just really heightened. It's always been like that. And I can't explain how I know it. I just know it. Sometimes it's because spirit is audibly telling me in my mind. Sometimes I just feel it. But it's just a knowingness, a gut knowingness that I, I just know it. I, I, that's the only way I can really explain it. Has I just having know it. this gift ever scared you? Like, did no, you never. Mm -mm. I've never. And a lot of people, medium psychics, tell me they're scared of it. And a lot of people I in readings, when I tell them, you know, you're a psychic, you know, you're a medium. Yeah, but I'm too scared. I'm deathly afraid. I can't do that. I'm like, you know, you just got to stay in the light with it. You've got to work for the highest good. Um, you know, for yourself and others. Um, but there's really nothing to be afraid of as long as you're doing that. And you know, you got to pray and protect yourself and that's, it's not something you should dabble in if you don't know what you're doing and you do have to be careful, but there's really, I've never really been afraid, no. But again, I was born like this. Um, and I will go back to the point where you asked how you just know things. Highly sensitive people are born with different types of nervous systems. We've okay. got extra feelers on the ends of our um, nerves that go out into the world, pick up stimuli and bring it back to us. Um, and so there is a biological component to being a psychic, to being a medium, aside from just working with spirit. Our nervous systems are just really, really, really sensitive. So you said like you can't turn spirit off. There's, there's I don't. I don't. You don't? S some do. I find it very difficult to do that. I do have a gatekeeper and he does kind of help keep spirits at bay a little bit. Like, you know, if I'm out with my husband or we're, you know, on a vacation somewhere, um, I'm shopping or, you know, getting my hair done, but they're never turned off completely. They're always there. Sometimes I can tune them out a little bit, but it's never off. I'm always getting messages. Now, what do they sound like? Does it sound like you and me talking? Does it sound like, you know, a robot? Does it? I don't robots? hear them. Talk, <laughs> That's a great question. I, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, what yeah. do they sound like? I mean, because sometimes when I'm laying in bed, I'll hear I'll hear my name, and I'm like, okay, what? You know, like, mm -hmm. but then nothing happens. So they're just getting your attention, which is very common. Um, some mediums will hear them as in different 
voices so that they would know, oh, that's this person, that's that person. I don't hear them in voices. I just hear the words, the thoughts, the phrases, the conversations. I've learned to tell if it's a man or a female, um, if it's a good energy or, you know, you know, maybe not so good energy. Um, and, and also ask questions, find out who they are. But I don't, when I hear them, I just hear the words. Okay. So, and I, I'm sure a lot of people want to know, why can't spirit tell us the lottery numbers? That would take the purpose of life away. But, okay, so people are now going to mediums and psychics instead of going to therapists. Um, they're going to, mm -hmm. you know, um, what is your take on all that? Do you think that, you know, people should go by everything that a medium and psychic says? Um, because a lot of times people, when they get readings, and I know when I lived in L.A., I got a lot of readings, mm -hmm. um, and nothing ever happened. So... You go to a medium and psychic to, to find answers for career and love and life and everything that you're trying to deal with, um, and nothing happens. Mm -hmm. So what do you say to those people? You know, do you still go? Like, are there, how do you know that someone's telling the truth? Sure, that's a good question. I think you have to be really careful who you go to. You've got to trust your gut about someone. I would tell people to ask friends, ask family, um, research, you know, the a good medium, a good psychic, if they've had a good experience with them. Um, and also not every medium and not every psychic is good for every person. We, we have our own personalities, you know, I'm a medium, I'm a psychic, but I have my own personality. And certainly I don't mesh with everybody exactly. You know, other mediums might be good for certain people, but I would ask around, ask your friends, ask your family, um, go to a medium, have a reading, wait and see if things play out, you know, as, the, as they're telling you they're going to, if they, if nothing ever happens, because I have had clients in the past that have told me, you know, I read with this person for 10 years and nothing she ever said happened. I said, well, for the love of <laughs> God, why did you keep going and spending thousands and thousands of dollars? You know, we can't always blame the medium or the psychic because the, the client has their responsibility in it too. You know, if you keep going back to someone and nothing's happening, you know, we have to take some of that responsibility as the client. So I would say ask for recommendations, go see a medium, go see a psychic, you know, give things a chance to play out. If nothing ever happens, I would look for someone else. Certainly there's very good psychics, there's very bad ones. Um, and again, like I said, not everybody's personality meshes with every medium. Um, and you have to be open to, you have to go into a reading with good energy. Um, if you're shut down, and you're really not open to it, it's okay to be a skeptic, but it's not really okay to go into a reading with shutdown energy right. and have it blocked. Um, and every once in a while, I'll run into those kind of clients and I'll say, you know, it's really, it's, it's difficult because you're blocking it. And I don't think they do it on purpose. I just think it's who they are. And so that can also interfere with a really good reading. If you don't really believe in it or you're, you totally have it blocked and you totally have it closed out, you're not going to get a good reading. It's okay not to believe everything they say, but have your energy open and not closed off. So who are you hearing? Are you hearing, I mean, if you were to give me a reading, are you hearing my spirit guides? Are they your spirit guides? Who's coming to talk? I mean, especially like if I have someone that's passed in my family that's coming through, mm -hmm. who, are they actually talking yep. to you or are they yep. talking through? For me and my readings, I won't speak for every medium because everybody works differently. How I work is when I get ready to do a reading, I do a prayer and I ask for the highest good to come through. I only allow those in the white light heaven, whatever name you want to give it, working for the highest good of the client or anybody else that they have messages for. So that's their spiritual support team. That can be your spirit guides, your higher self, your angels, loved ones. When I say loved ones, you want to think outside the box because that can include um, the nurse who delivered you back in the, in the delivery room. It can include, I once, not very long ago, had a neighbor of my client who burned in a house fire and had oh been God. watching her her whole life. And the only reason she knew that who this was coming through was because two weeks prior, he had influenced her parents to tell her about this, this man. If her parents wouldn't have told her about this neighbor who died in the house fire when she was a child, she wouldn't know who I was talking about. So he set that up prior to me reading for her. Um, it could be anybody and everybody in my readings. It can be relatives. It can be friends, coworkers. It can be somebody that you barely even knew. Um, you know, once we know someone or we have a bond, our, our paths cross. Even if you um, came into the world after they passed away, they still know who you are, especially like friends, family. Um, they'll know who you are. But anybody you've ever connected with, 
they remember you and they do watch over you. And in my readings, all kinds of people, um, pets and animals will come through and I do hear them in English. Um, <laughs> probably, I will say the longest soul that has ever come through to me in a reading for the longest period of time was about 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes, it was a dog. And that was several months now ago. Now, what do animals sound like? I mean, how do they... They sound... They speak English. I hear them in English. How that works, I don't know 100%, whether it's somebody translating, but I hear them in English. Horses and dogs, especially for me, but I love horses and dogs, so I have a connection with them. This dog came through, and every time I tried it to move forward and let some human spirits come through, this dog was like, no, I'm not done. And he just kept giving me more and more messages. But he had just passed away a couple of weeks prior, and the family was really grieving, and so it was really helpful. But he was so funny because he just kept going. And that's unusual for a, even a human spirit to come through for 20 or 30 minutes. That's, that's a long time. Yeah, that seems like a long time. Now, when you're reading someone and, you know, something's coming through and you, you don't want to tell them, do you still tell them? Do you? I, I tell everything. Okay, even the bad? I am a real <laughs> down-to-earth kind of medium. Um, I try to say it with love and with kindness and gentleness and, of course, you know, poise. Um, I don't want to hurt anybody. But I do ask at the beginning of every reading, do you want to know everything, especially if it's a new client? My older clients have had for years and years. I may not ask them that because I know, how, you know, I know who they are, what they like. But clients that are new, I always say, do you want to know everything? Right. This includes if someone that you know is going to pass away. And then I let them, most people, I would say 97 to 98% want to know everything, good, bad. Oh, absolutely, good, bad, and I know I do. You guys um, agree? <laughs> some people will say, I don't want to know if my children are gonna pass away, and I thank God have never well, had to no, tell somebody. I, I mean, I'm not a mom, but I wouldn't want Right, yeah. um, and I've never had that come up in a reading. Um, I do have death come up, but it's never been someone's children. Um, and I can usually tell them if it's on the mother's side, the father's side, a friend, a coworker. Um, sometimes I know specifically who it is. Sometimes spirit will tell me, sometimes they won't. Most people want to know, some don't. Um, but I always ask them, do you want to know everything? Is there any topic off limits before we start? And if they say no, then I'll say, okay, if you change your mind at any time, or this is a, you know, a, a tough topic comes up, please let me know. And I'll respect that because they're paying me. I respect the if they don't want to hear about something. Um, if they tell me everything, then I do tell them everything um, because, you know, they've told me that they want to know that. I just believe readings are to be honest. Um, I know some mediums don't like to pass on certain things. That's not how I work because I feel when we go into a reading, I take it really seriously um, and I ask for only the highest good. So if spirit's coming through with something that, you know, it may sound... Um, like it's gonna upset somebody or something like that. It's never to upset them, it's to prepare them or to give them information for which to, well, to prepare or just give them a heads up that something's coming. It's never to scare anybody, at least in my readings, can only speak for myself. Um, but I do tell everything because I feel like that's what's the point of the reading, you know? Oh, I agree. I think if you're gonna get a reading, you're gonna spend that, kind of, you know, you spend a lot of money on, on good readings. I mean, it's, it's, right. it's what you, you wanna hear, you wanna know your future. Right. Um, now, I know a lot, I, mean, I know men get readings too, but primarily women get readings. And um, do you ever have someone that's like constantly getting a reading and constantly getting a reading, you're like, okay, enough, you don't need yeah. it. Because you, you know, you wanna try to, you know, there's so much talk today, you know, with empowering women and helping women and helping, mm -hmm. you know, everyone so this whole world can maybe come together. Um, but I mean, it's got to be kind of frustrating if someone's constantly coming to you and you're like, okay, you need to just kind of, how do you deal with that? For me, you know, I used to work on some of the online, um, I don't know if you call them 1 800 numbers for psychic lines. Is it the Hollywood um, psychic but or something? <laughs> I worked for three or four of those at the same time I was building my private business. So um, I did get a lot of those kind of people that would call. Um, you get all kinds of people that call. A lot of people are very lonely, a lot of lonely people in the world. And a lot of people will use readings to call for someone to talk to. You know, I used to work a lot of late nights <laughs> on those lines. And they would call. Um, because they're lonely and they have no one to talk to. I never knew there were so many lonely, sad people in the right. world. Even people that put on a, a really brave, happy face during the day, when they're at home at night alone, they're very sad and they would 
call and say, I have no one to talk to. And you know, sometimes they're very famous people. You know, they say they have no one to talk to. So a lot of people will call for someone to talk to. I have had people that will call several times a day. And on those lines, you can't really tell them they can't. But in my private business, it's not quite as as much. I do have some people who call me several times a week. Um, And of course, if if you have readings, you know, things don't change that fast. There can be things, but generally, some people like to use it because they need someone to talk to. They need advice. They need someone to talk to. They want to know what spirit says. And some people like to have readings once a year, twice a year. Other people like to have them every other day. Some people like to have them once a week. Um, And I will kind of tell them, you know, we don't really need to read this much. But with some people, I feel they really need a friend. And um, they really need someone to talk to. And so I try to be there for them. But I tell them, listen, you know, there's things don't change that often but if they want to call me and you know they want to spend the money and I do talk to a lot of them for free or give discounts um, <clears throat> but everybody just has such a varying degree as to how often they like readings I just know there's a lot of lonely people out there that call and have readings for someone to talk to and that's kind of sad but I mean I guess it's it makes sense it can be an addiction for some people especially on the psychic lines I don't really experience that in my private business because I won't really allow it like that Um, but I have read for lots of people who become very addicted because it can be an addiction like anything else Um, and so they get addicted to it and they spend their life savings and they lose their homes and their cars and certainly that is not what I'm about would never let anybody call me but I've heard some real horror stories from clients that call me that have said they've you know, lost their homes to mediums, and oh, I just, I, 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 I shudder, just, it makes me very upset. Because, and that's, you know, I do this show because I want to have genuine mediums and psychics, mm-hmm. and um, I've learned a lot, and I, I think that the universe has, is bringing certain people to me, like yourself, um, because I want to make sure that I can give the audience what they really want, Mm -hmm. where they have the opportunity to meet someone that has a gift that can really help them. And I think it's great you're doing this show too and showcasing, you you know, real and true and authentic psychics and mediums and empaths and all kinds of people that do their work in different ways. We can all call ourselves different names, but we all work differently and, you know, they're spiritual healers and, you know, there's, there are really real, true, authentic psychics and mediums, which is what I think it's great you're doing this because there are fakes and frauds like in every business. Oh yeah, I know. I gave them a lot of money. (laughs) And there are those that really are psychic but they're just baby psychics they're just beginning and they're getting their feet wet and maybe they're not as you know um accomplished in their career yet maybe they're not very good maybe they don't take it very seriously maybe they're not very good people you know there's this gift is in all all walks of life you don't have to be a super super great person to have this gift it's in all kinds of people so you really have to trust your gut when choosing a psychic or a medium um, like I said, get get referrals. Really go with your gut. If something doesn't feel right, you have to trust it. Um, and I think you asked me earlier, should we just believe everything every psychic medium says? No. You want to build up a trust. I have clients that I've had for years and years and years and years, and they have a trust with me. Right. Um, and so you want to find someone who predominantly most of the time is correct. No, but no psychic or medium is 100% correct all the time. People have free will. Even the best of the mediums can be wrong. You know, um, people have free will and, you know, there's just a lot of different variabilities. But you want to find somebody who, for the most part, is very accurate. And you just, you know, that's how you build your clientele up is by, you know, being, giving your best reading every single time. And that's what I do. I try to give my very best to every single client that I have. And that's how I built my business up is one reading at a time. Um, The one thing that I get frustrated with, and I'm sure people in the audience can... um, tell me, agree with me, is the universe doesn't know time. So when a medium or psychic says, you know, a couple months you're going to move or that guy will call you in a couple weeks, they really have no idea. So how long, I mean, do you, you're, you're, they don't know time. So how can you help someone get that time as close to when it may happen? In my readings, I get time frames, and they're pretty good. Okay. Um, I have 
spoken with psychics and mediums myself many you know years ago and their timing was never right <laughs> like i said there's mediums that are very very good and very accomplished and have done this in many lifetimes and are just very very good at it. and they work with spirits on the other side that are pretty high level spirits there's other mediums and psychics that you know just ha aren't haven't built up they're not quite as good yet they're still practicing i mean we're all practicing every day but you know there's just varying degrees like there's very good lawyers there's lawyers that aren't very good. There's very good doctors. There's doctors who are just learning. So the same with psychics and mediums. So you just have to find a psychic or a medium who is very good with timing. I give time frames if I'm given time frames. I do not guesstimate them. I do not make them up. And I'm very honest with that. I have a little speech that I give the first time I read for somebody and I explain how I work, where all information comes from, and time frames. The spirits that I work with are very good with time frames, but no, they don't have time on the other side. There is no linear time frames. Time is a human thing that we have made up because we need it to live here, of course, but in spirit, there is no time. How it all works, I don't know, but I do get time frames from spirit and they are very, they're really pretty good. So if I tell someone, this is how I'll hear time frames. If someone says, well, when do you think I'm going to take this trip? Spirit will say, well, or let's just say somebody says, when is he going to call me? That's a, that's a very <laughs> a common one. When life. is he going to call me? Um, and, you know, it's funny because men don't call me and say, when is she going to call me? Exactly, it's it's men always don't care. women who want to know, when's he going to call me? Spirit might say, well, any... And I had someone today said, when am I going to get some money that she's expecting? And Spirit said, well, we suggest within the next one to two days to the next one to two weeks. If she doesn't have this money by the end of the month to the start of January, we'll be very, very, very surprised. So that is what I pass on to her. Um, I don't make anything up. I've never made up anything up in a reading that would be using my gifts in a very inappropriate way. And I would never do that because they can be taken away. Um, and so that's how I hear time frame. Spirit will say, we suggest, and whatever the time frame is, we suggest within the next two to three to four months, this is going to happen. So it could happen at any time between when I'm talking and that time frame I give. And spirit's usually pretty right on. Do you, I mean, where would you like to see your career go having this gift? What would you like to see, where would you like to go? Um, well, I would like to take it international. It is international. I do have tons and tons of clients, Canada, Europe, Australia, all kinds of countries. I want to travel internationally with my business and I would like to just build it really big so that I can, you know, do some um, public speaking about it. I really love to empower people, especially women, men too. Um, but women... <laughs> Don't worry, guys. <laughs> we're not forgetting about you. I, I'm open to all people, it does, you know, men, women. But... Um, I love to empower women with through readings. Um, this, we're living in a time now when re women are really coming into their power. Mm -hmm. It's not the 50s anymore. Women are not housewives like they were. We're not waiting for men to bring home the bacon so we can fry it up. You know, <laughs> we're, we're not, you know, and I'm, there's nothing wrong with being a housewife. I was a right. housewife when my children were young, but women are here to do so much more now. And not that that's bad. No offense no, I think any it's housewives. Great. I think it's we all wonderful. Need to be I was a, a stay at home mom for a while, but we're all here to do other things too. Um, and women can accomplish so many great things. And, you know, a lot of women have really so low self-esteem. And so I love empowering women that they can get out there and live their best life, still have husbands, still have boyfriends, still have children, but have wonderful careers and, and support themselves and sometimes make more money than the husbands. There's nothing wrong with that. You no, know, not at all. I just want to take it worldwide. I really want to help people all over the world, not just Americans, but people all over the world. And I have clients all over the world, but I want to travel to those countries and really open up big forums and really spread the word about psychics and mediums that the, there really are true, legitimate, it's, there really are real, true, legitimate psychics and mediums. Now, since you've been here, you've already gotten spirit that's talking to you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they're wanting, they're, they're going. So in a couple seconds, we're going to go and Leisha's going to read the audience. Um, now, you did talk about a name, Vernon, or... There was a Verl or a Vernon. Um, I don't... Verlene, Verl. Okay. It's a very strange name. I don't know. I don't know. And I don't know if it's for anybody in here. Um, they were telling me watching. down in the green room, somebody... 
So if it's somebody watching. Shirlene, it could even be like a Shirlene. Okay, so if that's something that re resonates to someone that's even watching, just send um, Leisha or myself a message and then. It could be for Thank somebody that's gonna watch this program too. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I've got a Haitian grandfather here too. I've got somebody who died of a drug overdose. Got a lot of people coming through. Okay. So let's go and read the audience. Okay. So, I'm looking forward to it. All right. It. Let's do it. Oh, I'm getting the goosebumps. Um, kind of. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. a TV. I was getting that in the green room, and I am getting the goosebumps. And when I say goosebumps or chills, that's a thumbs up to me from Spirit. It's their energy going through me. I've got a grandmother energy telling me that. Um, could be great grandma on the mother side. Great yes. Gra yes. Yeah. Um, she's around you a lot, loves you a lot. Um, there's a cat in spirit around you too. Did you have cats or something? I did. <laughs> okay, there's yeah. cats around you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a cat with blue eyes. Did you ever have a cat with blue eyes? Um, there's a white cat with blue eyes. I don't, it's just, there's a, it could be a neighbor's or somebody's white cat with blue eyes too. Yeah, yeah. You had a white cat with blue eyes? Yeah. Okay, there's a white cat with blue eyes around you. Not You've... <laughs> You're going to be driving a new Always vehicle, know. a new car. When I say new, it could be new to you, but yep. new. Oh, so yeah, you know about that? Right. Okay, yeah. oh, thank you. Spot on. So Don't how I'm it. working <laughs> is um, I'm hearing spirit in my mind. They're telling me, so I'm just passing it. I'm just yep. the medium. I just pass the messages. Um, so I've never known spirit to be wrong. It can be the time frame. You know, sometimes things are soon. Sometimes things are down the line, but they always happen. Yeah. So um, you've got a big budding career ahead of you. You're going to be traveling internationally quite a bit coming up. Okay. Um, Full-time babysitter you're going to need. Do you have that lined up yet? Looking. <laughs> okay. Searching. You're going to need that soon. Um, one of your kids is starting a new school soon. Do you know about that? Um, one will be starting school. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And is there some extra tutoring or something going on for one of them? A little extra. Okay. That's yeah. fine. Okay. One of the boys? Yep. Okay. All right. Um, there's a new baby coming in the family. Do we... <laughs> Uh, well, see what happens? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> not me. There's a new baby coming in the okay. family somewhere. Do you okay. know about that? Not yet. Okay. Um, you yourself may. Do you know about that? No, but. <laughs> <laughs> Have other people told you <laughs> that before? <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, All right, we'll keep moving. Any, if you okay, did, I wouldn't be possible. surprised. Okay. okay. There's I another baby you. coming in the family, okay. though. Um, your brother. You have a brother. Yes. Uh, has a girlfriend or fiance, something yeah. like that. Are they having a baby, do you know? There could be a baby coming in that direction. I'm not Maybe, saying it's tomorrow. Yeah. I'm not hey, saying it's no, next it's, month, but yeah. <laughs> it's They're coming. Serious, so, yeah. Yes. Um, let me see here. Courtney. Your name is Courtney, right? Yep. Um, traveling internationally quite a bit. Your husband's got a new job or new career coming, too. He works at some kind of an amusement park yes. or theme park or something like that. Yep. That's not for much longer. Do you know about that? He's always looking. But yeah. Has he been tempted to go back to school or get some kind of education? Has he mentioned that yet? Yes. Okay. That's, they said he's been tempted to do that. Yeah. That's a good idea for him. Okay. Um, he's got a grandfather in spirit yeah. on the father's side. Yeah. Yes. He's coming through. He wants to say hello and extend his love to him. He's very proud of him and very, pr oh, this give me the goosebumps to the chills, to the toes. Um, he's very proud of the family he's created. So um, it's, it's compliments yeah. to you and hugs to you too. And there's purple hearts everywhere he's sending. Um, Somebody's going to give you flowers or something soon, too, so watch. <laughs> I don't know if that's your husband or somebody else, but somebody's going to give that you some flowers. She's going to be in trouble. <laughs> flowers are coming from somewhere. <laughs> um, I will tell you, your husband loves you with all his heart. He considers you a soulmate. Oh. don't want to put you on the, on the spot, but that's what, that's what his <laughs> grandfather just said. So he's reading your husband's heart, and that's coming from your husband. Um, he's a good man. He'll be with you till the end of time. That's what, he, that's what his grandfather just said. Um, but you have a lot of speaking engagements ahead of you. Um, getting out of the industry you're in right now. I don't know if you want me to say that. Yeah, no, it's okay. Okay, getting yeah. out of the industry you're in right now. Um, not selling that product much longer. Okay. Um, watch out for the jealous people because you're very, 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 very good at what you do. Um, and jealous people come up around you. You yep. are such a pure, beautiful, honest soul. Um, jealous people always come out. But you know, you just got to say no to the haters and you just got to keep your nose to the grindstone. Yep. I love empowering women. Just keep going with your career. You're going to do great. A lot of money you're going to make. Um, your husband may even actually not have to work a job for a while because you'll be making so much money. That's the goal. And, okay. <laughs> so Isn't he may actually... Our goal as women? This yeah. is interesting because this is a path that Spirit's been telling me. I'm kind of... Um, my husband and I are kind of doing something similar. He's yeah. not working right now. He's kind of retired and we're doing the business. Yeah. 
and they're saying I'm showing the example and so you're coming up behind me you're you're going to be doing the example men are going to be finding out it's okay to stay home and take care of kids or stay home for a while or retire early and let the women bring home the bacon for a little bit it's okay for women to be empowered men yeah. it's okay it's okay men <laughs> your manhood is not at stake at stake because women are working but your husband may stay home with the kids for a little bit or something because you're making money awesome do you have any questions you want to ask so okay we have a bright future ahead of you you really do Thank you. traveling all over the world thank you we, they said we may even speak at some engagements at the same time <gasps> sometimes so it. that's exciting let's oh I can't it. wait <laughs> yeah good luck all you right. and I still so hear much. another baby on the way so <laughs> <laughs> thank you thanks for coming thank you okay who's next uh, let me see how about the lady with the, po the ponytail that the little girl is <laughs> <laughs> sitting on her lap now <laughs> and I keep getting something about a skateboarding accident or does anybody in here know anything about skateboarding skateboarding accident something with skateboarding now as for live on Facebook and Instagram like if people are hearing what she's saying you can message and Catherine and Leisha's husband can let us know that what you know yeah I keep getting something about skateboarding What's your name? Sherry. Sherry, nice to meet you. hi Sherry hi. thanks for coming um, you've got a new career ahead of you, going to be moving out of state. Do you know about that yet? No, I don't. Okay. Selling a house soon. Do you know about selling a house soon? We're in the process of selling Okay. A house. That's not going to take that much longer to do that. Um, you're going to be moving from where you're living coming up to. Um, you've had some health issues or some health problems or mm -hmm. something going on. Those are going to be getting better. Um, there's a grandmother and a grandfather in spirit for you. They're coming. Let me see which side they're coming in on. Grandmother on your mother's side? Mm -hmm. a, a grandfather, let me see, there's a grandfather too. A grandfather on both your mother and your father's side. Are both grandfathers gone? Yes. There's a grandfather. Okay, sometimes it's a great grandfather. And spirit does not always differentiate whether it's great grandfather, they just say grandfather. But there's a grandfather on both sides of the family and a grandmother on your mother's side. Um, this might be where the brownie thing is coming in. Did one of your grandmothers bake brownies or bake baked goods like that? Uh, my grandmother. Baked Does she ever make brownies? I can't remember brownies. Okay, there's something about brownies and baking, but it could just be the baking. Um, and so you're related to the uh, the little girl and the mom She's that were. She's my niece. And okay. My sister. Okay. That's probably why the brownie stuff was all coming in together then. Um, so one of your grandmothers was a baker, or mm. bake stuff. Okay, that's probably where the brownies are coming in. And maybe it's not brownies. It could just be a baked good. Um, you have a lot of past lives, um, military, but you have not been in the military this lifetime, right? No, I haven't. Because you have a lot of strong energy about military background, um, a lot of military involvement in being in the military in past lifetimes. Has anyone ever told you that? You have. Okay. It's <laughs> <laughs> got a very strong, um, a strong spirit. Um, there's going to be a southern state that you move to as well. A new love interest is coming in for you too. A couple of new love interests. You'll have some choices there. You may reconnect with an old love flame as well. Um, looking, making, to make, making to look money in a new way is coming around you too. Do you have any questions? No. <laughs> There's a whole new wardrobe, and I know this is very, um, it's not a big deal, and sometimes things that spirit says are not earth shattering. Sometimes they're just very matter of fact things that you know we have to do as as human beings. Something about having to buy a whole new wardrobe. Mm -hmm. Do you have to get new uniforms for work or something? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, watch and see about getting new uniforms for work and there's something about buying a whole new wardrobe. That could be connected to the new career too. Okay. Um, did one of your grandparents speak a foreign language or know a foreign language besides English? Uh, I think my Grandfather on my dad's side knew some Italian. Yeah, because there's a grandparent energy keep telling me that he knew how to speak his foreign language. So that's his way of coming forward to you. Um, do you know an Edward or an Eddie? Either living or in spirit. There, I keep hearing the name Edward or Eddie around you. Ed, Eddie, yeah. or Edward. Does your sister know an Ed, Edward, or Edward? No. There's somebody with that name coming in around you. Um, they're in spirit, so watch. and. It could be a first name, middle name, last name, nickname, birth certificate name. I don't know. Just watch and see. It, it may hit you later. Um, do you have any questions you want to ask me? No. You You're going to look to live your life in a new way coming up, too. 
like maybe getting a fresh start, moving away, getting a fresh start. But that house is going to sell soon. Okay. And some yard work. I know this is a weird season for yard work. Are you having to do some yard work or have yard work done? I want to do some. Okay. So you're talking <laughs> about you're going to be doing some yard work. Um, you're going to be traveling to a lot of different states, which obviously I think you came here. You, you don't live in this state, right? No, I live in Maryland. Okay. She's gonna be, you're going to be traveling to a lot of different states coming up. Um, quite a few road trips you're going to be taking as well. Um, the grandfather that spoke the Italian, you said, he's sending a lot of love to you. Um, there's a mother figure in spirit for you, too? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, she's sending her love. Um, let me see. Your, the, your niece was the little girl that came up here, right? Um, is she, her, she's named after somebody, either her first name or her middle name? No. They're saying she's named after somebody. Uh, her middle name's Ireland. Oh, is that, and that's named after the, the country of Ireland? No, or somebody no. in the family? What, what, I didn't hear what she said. Um, it's um, for my husband's heritage. So oh, that's named after somebody. Sometimes when people are named after somebody, spirit will say they're named after somebody, but it's a movie star, a TV show, could be anything like that. It doesn't have to be family, but it can be. So she is named after somebody. So they're just letting you know that they know these things. And also to let people know that are watching, I'm not just sitting here staring at the walls and making things up, um, you know, because I don't know no, that her name is named after that. somebody. Um, I just get your overall going to be creating like a new life for yourself, looking to do things in a new way. Okay. And you're very good at guarding or protecting people. Do you do that in your life? Protect people, watch over people? I uh, work for security. That's, that's okay. <laughs> but even in like a mental, emotional sense, would you watch over family members yeah. or just be there for them, emotional support? I'm very protective of That them. comes, stems in or comes in from your military background and past lifetimes. Um, you're very strong, you're very gifted too, um, a very gifted psychic medium. You have a lot of abilities, well, and your niece does too. Like I told your sister, it runs in the family. It's very thick with you. You could, you know, work on it and make it into a business if you wanted to. It's up to you. Okay. Do you know a lot of things before they happen? Um, sometimes, yeah. I feel it. Yeah, they said you know a lot of things before they happen. Anyway, thank All you for right. coming. Thank you, thank you very much. Where um, else are you feeling? Let me see here. The gentleman in the back with the, I think it's gray sweater, sweatshirt, and khaki pants <laughs> with the glasses. See, we have a gentleman in the audience. Men get readings. Men get readings. <laughs> they really he's do. Not, he's, not, <laughs> he's not too sure about this whole thing. What's your name? Phil. Phil. Lisa, nice to meet you. Nice Thank you. Hi, Phil. Nice to meet you. Um, you're going to be doing a lot of things differently in your lifetime. Um, you've got to get yourself or, or your wife a new car or vehicle coming up. Do you know about that? I want to, but... There's a car that they're saying is going to go kaput, <laughs> which means it's just not going to be running anymore. Something's going to happen with it. That may be sooner rather than later. Um, you have many, many, many healing abilities. Um, I do have a Haitian grandfather, or a grandfather that comes from Haiti, um, Haitian background. Yes. Um, d did you know him? He had a lot of abilities. Yes. He's been with me for several hours now. He's yes. been telling me that he was very gifted. Yes. A natural gifted healer. Did you know that? Yes. Um, and your father, do you know that your father's kind of a healer too? He has some abilities? Mm, no. Your father's got some abilities too, um, but the grandfather says he had the abilities um, as well, and he's been around you a lot lately. Okay. Um, he says he knows you've been very stressed lately, <laughs> very stressed. Kind of. He said that's going to be coming to an end, okay. um, and you and your wife are going to be doing a lot of traveling, a lot of traveling coming up, international travels. He says get right to work get right to work on your healing abilities. Get right to work with your healing stuff. Don't let anything stop you. Don't let anyone talk you out of it. Um, I don't know if you want me to say what your <laughs> what your day-to-day -day work is, but they want you to get out of that. Um, your glasses, do you, are you having any problems with them? You may not have to get a new prescription. Do you know about that yet? No, the only day <coughs> I have another pair of glasses and the lens fell off the other oh. day. Oh. As a matter of fact, <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> that could be what it is. I keep talking about something about getting a new prescription, getting a new pair of glasses. So if yeah. your lens fell out, then maybe yeah, you have to I do did. that. Um, but your pres the actual prescription, like the vision may actually change. So you may find, and I, you know, that could be down the line too, but there's something about the, the prescription may change. Okay. Um, you're going to be driving a new car soon. Um, spending a lot of time overseas coming up as well. 
get, they say they keep saying get going, get going, get going on your healing abilities and really make a career out of it. Um, do you want to ask me any questions about anything? No, I'm just. There's, <laughs> there's also a grandfather on like a Cuban side yes. that comes through with the hair slicked back, ladies man. Yes. Um, Very. He wore a particular type of cologne. Do you remember mm, about a cologne that he wore? Not really, but is a very. I've got a grandfather yes. energy talking about a particular kind of cologne or wearing cologne, um, like a ladies man. Um, he is. He was. <laughs> he was. He's very charming. Yes, very, he is. very charming and very smooth. Very nice man. Yes. Um, has a good sense of humor. Um, do you relate to a grandparent eating popcorn? Not sure. Think about something like popcorn. I keep getting a, a grandparent energy that ate popcorn. Um, and do you know someone named Lois, either living or passed away? The name Lois keeps coming Lois, up around you. Lois. No. If you don't think about it right now, you might think about it because it might come up later. Okay. Someone named Lois. Um, you've got a lot of family ancestors around you. Um, you're going to be going to a southern state as well, like a Texas, New Mexico, or Arizona. You're going to learn to work with your abilities and make a career out of them. They're really insistent you've got to do that. <laughs> My ability, uh, okay. You're a bit with your healing okay. abilities. Yeah. I, you're probably you're a little scared about that, aren't you? Scared to really? take the leap. Really. <laughs> why are you scared about that? If you have a gift, why don't you want to? Mm, not not being wrong. That's what spirit. So. They just said that kind to of, me. Yeah. yeah. That you're afraid that people won't, and also if afraid that people won't won't believe that you're good at it or that you really have that ability that you can really heal them and help them. You just have to take their leap of faith. Okay. And they said you're afraid of not really being able to help them, which is what you said. You yes. just have to take the leap of faith and do it, one, one person at a time. Hmm. You really do have the abilities. It runs okay. really thick in your family. Um, your son is going to take a job soon. Okay. You have a son that still lives at home? Yes. He's going to take a job soon. Um, some international travel for you and the son. Okay. Um, wife may go along with you. You may live overseas for a while coming up. Okay. Um, I still get you getting out of your day job. I'm not going to tell everybody <laughs> what that is unless you want me to. No, it's fine. But getting, no, it, getting no out problem. of the automotive industry okay. um, and getting into your healing work. Okay. I know, actually know a lot of people in the automotive industry who are supposed to be getting out of that and going into healing. It's kind of weird, you know, being all, the, all these years in the automotive industry and now to go to the healing business. It's scary. It's, kind of it's scary, but it should be like a fresh new start, you know. Guess, but, you yeah. know, I did secretarial administrative for over 20 years when I raised my kids and then jumped into this. And I was just thrown in. I mean, there was no, like, transition. It was just, I was kind of thrown into it. Um, but I love it. It really makes your life so happy and so fulfilled. I mean, okay. I, I, you're, very good. you're a very, very, very good healer. You just have to trust yourself. Trust, trust, trust yourself. <laughs> trust. <laughs> Anything you want to ask? Now it's kind of hard, like I said, you know, being a mechanic for all these years, and now I'm going to be a healer. It's like, okay, what's going to happen, you know? Well, so. you know, and I never thought that I would be a professional psychic medium either. You know, if you'd asked me 20 years ago, I would have thought you were crazy, and people used to tell me I would. And I, you know, I had these abilities, but I didn't think that I would ever be sitting here doing this talk show today. You know, life is crazy, and we have to take our leap of faith, and then okay. spirit does the rest. You come from a long line of healers. You may actually go to another country and study there, and that may boost your confidence. Okay. Um, if you know anybody else who is in the automotive industry who's supposed to be getting into the healing business, you guys could kind of pair up, talk, other gentlemen that okay. you might know okay. that are supposed to be doing Sounds the same good. thing, and you know, help each other, boost each other's confidence, practice on each other, just talk okay. about it. Um, your wife, I still get she's going to be doing some kind of getting a career, working in some, some fashion. Um, she's meant to do some kind of healing work as well. Yes. And she could incorporate some kind of photography with it too, okay. into the healing business. Um, I don't know if she's ever thought about doing like aura photography, taking p people's, taking Not pictures sure of people's auras. That. She could think about that. Okay. Um, does she, she does photography? Yes, she does. She could do something Very with good it. Very good at it. And she has abilities too, like psychic abilities. Yes, she does. She's um, very shy, she does not want to. <laughs> she's a little afraid. Yes. They're saying the whole family has to come out of the proverbial closet. <laughs> if you want to put it that way. 
with your abilities. And I know it can be a little scary. I mean, I have come out of the closet in my family okay. and not everybody understands it. They're all usually very gifted themselves, but they're afraid to admit it for different reasons. But you're very, very gifted. You just have to trust. All right. I will. And the, the younger son that you're worried about is going to be okay. Okay. It's kind, of a, know that. it's kind of a learning lesson for him. Okay. It's kind of a learning lesson for the whole family. Okay. Unfortunately, we... Your family is very close to each other. So what kind of happens to one, all of you kind of experience it and yes. feel it and go through it, but you're a tight knit, close family, okay. many, many lifetimes together. You're very, wow. sometimes it would, be, it would even be good if you guys kind of separate and went your own ways a little bit. So you're not so close to each other because what one happens to one of you, it kind of happens to all it's of you. Yes. Energetic because energy is very strong and y'all are so close. Um, might move too. might move to another state. There's a move coming. Um, your wife wants to move to Florida or somewhere yeah, warm she like does. that. Yes. California. Florida. <laughs> California is even a possibility. Okay. Um, I don't know if that's been told to you before, um, but you're me really meant to do your healing work around the world. Yeah. You could even incorporate it with a daughter. Could do that with her. With Some healing daughter? work. Okay. Mm -hmm. And some flipping houses, does that come up? Flipping houses, yes, doing some housing? Yes, we just went to a class um, uh, last two weeks ago. It's a um, uh, fortune builder. Okay. Yes. That is a good industry house. for you to get into. Don't dump all your life savings or anything into it. Okay. You could put some into it. That's not what you're supposed to do for your soul's career, but it's a way that something you could do to make some money. Okay. To help get you out of the automotive out industry. Okay. Um, they're saying the automotive industry can be a little bit of a slimy, nothing wrong with mechanics or being a mechanic. There's nothing wrong with cars. You can still work on cars. You can still love cars. It can still be your heart's passion. Yes, um, but that. they're kind of wanting you to get out of it because some of the people involved in that industry, maybe not so good. Okay. And it really affects you because you're, you're sensitive yes. and it could really affect your energy. Yeah, because I have a business partner, so right. we run the business together. And right. Literally, it's kind of... You not have so to get good. out of there. Yeah. Yeah, before some legal things could happen. Not mm. you, you're not doing anything wrong, but okay. just some legal things could happen. Um, do you know anything that about that business having to move to another location? Is that? No, we were talking about expanding with something else. And moving it. Let me see. I don't think that's it, though. The actual the business that's in that location mm -hmm. and that building may have to move to another location. Okay. Um, they'd like you to get out of there before then, okay. but you know, like everybody's got free will. You know, we spirit can suggest that we do things, but do mm -hmm. we have to do it? No. We're the maker. We're the creator. We're in charge of our own lives. Spirit okay. can urge us. They can nudge us. They can hit us over the head sometimes, but. Can they force us most of the time? No. Sometimes, yes, we have to get pushed that direction and they'll make life very difficult for us until we do go in that direction. Okay. But ultimately, it's our lifetime. We're in charge. Okay. Um, but you are very, very gifted. You're also an uplifter. You can bring other people's energies up and really affect them. Um, yes. You're the kind of the leader of the pack in your household as far as energy. So if your energy's up, other people are going to follow yes. you. If you're down, they're going to be down. Definitely. And I know that that's the way I am too, so I understand that. So um, you, you understand that about yes. you're the leader of the energy in your house. Yes. People kind of take your cue. Okay. Um, do you know somebody in spirit who had a hearing problem or couldn't hear very well? So I keep, somebody in spirit around you keeps talking about they had a hearing problem or they couldn't hear very well. No. towards the end of their life. I don't know that they wore hearing aids, but maybe they just couldn't hear very well. No. Maybe I'm Think about it. There's some, <coughs> somebody maybe on in spirit my wife's side. Yeah, it could be on her side. Yeah. Is she here? Do you want to? So I'm going to let you finish because okay. I'm going to say good night. Okay. So thank you all very, very much. Uh, Alicia's going to continue to do what she does best, and we're going to say good night. Thanks a lot. Audio jump.
hairstylist, my cameraman's a hairstylist. All right, are we ready, guys? Will's here. I see him. Rock and roll. <coughs> it's two minutes to uh, party time. One minute to party time. <coughs> okay. What was the name that you? Yeah, but I need the mic. Where's the? I don't have the mic. Oh, there it is. Hello. All right. So, Alicia, where do you want me to? So you mark your that T to your left. I'm this tape. The opening of. Do you want to do it now? You want to do it now or like? We're just going to run through it and then we'll go to the first two heads to go by so that you might want to do it at the end. Yeah, let's do it at the end because we have people. It's going over and over and over and over. It would have been a young girl. Mm-hmm. It's a girl. Oh, okay. And I don't know. There's a name, Christy. Krista, Christy, but I don't know if that goes with them. I just keep, I'm hearing there's like tons of spirits all. Not in. There's tons of spirits just talking, so. Do you want the audience? Well, tell them to be quiet <laughs> right now. They have to be quiet for 25 <laughs> minutes. Do you know someone that died of a drug overdose, though? Yes. I didn't hear what she said. 